and he will direct your path. Our congregation when young this morning is holy, holy, holy. Let us sing with uplifting voices as we give praises to God. Stanzas one, two, and four. It's just great to be 
blessed by God. And so this is what he did with the children there. And so this is why he's encouraging us. It's very important that we encourage our children to come and be a part of our, of our services. And I know, uh, as I was talking to other pastors, uh, a whole lot of churches, uh, the young people are just not making it back in right yet. We don't know if it's because of the parents that aren't bringing the children out. Or, you know, I know the, the, the still in this battle about the children being vaccinated. Uh, but nevertheless, we still got to reach out to them. We got to do what we can to, to teach them and show them the way and uh, lead them uh, to receive Christ. And then we as adults got to make sure that we receive the Spirit of God as a little child. Because if we don't, then we will not make it in. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, children. You may be seated and have your day. Sisters, I think if we, if any of us have lived any days in this world 
And in this life, we know that life has some dangers about it. As we travel from place to place, there are many dangers that we uh, come across and some that we may experience and some we near and don't even know we near it. Uh, there are times as we're riding up and down the highway. Many of us don't realize how close we come to being involved in car accidents. Uh, we're on a danger trail. Uh, we are traveling in a dangerous and tedious world. Uh, sickness all around us. Look at us. Uh, sit, uh, sitting separate from one another. Wearing masks. Uh, in the house of God. Because there's danger all around us. But we need to understand that even as we look at the danger in the world. Paul is trying to make us also understand. That as we as Christians walk in this world. It is a degree of danger that we are in, but he's letting us know that he has a concern for the Colossians, uh, the Colossian Christians there, to let them know that he knows everything that they're going through. Look what he says in verse 1 of chapter 2. He says in verse 1 of chapter 2, For I want you to know, but a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea. For as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. In other words, he said, I know what you're going through. I know some of the sufferings that you're dealing with. I know some of the agonies and the pain that uh, even though I've spoken to some and I, I've been there, but there have been others that didn't see my face. But I want all of you to know that I know what you are experiencing. He gives a warning about being enticed to sin. In verse 4, he says, Now this I say, that anyone should deceive you with a persuasive word. There are going to be people that's going to try to entice you away from the word of God. And uh, I think all of us know that if you have dealt, if anybody, have dealt with a, a telemarketer telephone call. You know how smooth talking they can be. Amen. Uh, they're talking such a way that they, that they won't even try to let you get a word in edgewise because they got their little spiel, they got their little routine, and uh, some of them, and they be going, they be going, and I say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm stop it. I, I don't want to hear that. I don't wanna, can you listen to me? But uh, most of them say, no. But, but, uh, but you see, they, they got their routine. And they, what they're trying to do, they're trying to entice you into buying their product. There are people that are in the world, whether we want to believe it or not, there are people that will come and try to entice us as Christians to leave our walk and walk with them. Amen. Oh yeah, they'll tell you. And I, that, that's why they, uh, they'll tell, especially they'll put them, they'll whisper in the ears of our young people. And, and, and I don't just label that on the young people because we got some old folks out there too. They'll tell them, oh, you know, you can't have no fun in the church. They ain't they just old starchy folks. But that's what they're, they're trying to entice you away from uh, the walk of God. Amen. And so Paul is letting them know. That he's aware of the things that, that they're going through. And the, the key word, the key word of, 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 the, of this chapter is found in verse 8. The key word to this whole chapter is found in verse 8. The very first word says, beware. Amen. Beware. Amen. We, we got to understand that. We got to beware of the things around us. And then verse 8 says, beware lest anyone cheat you. Uh, through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Yeah, they're, they're going to try to entice you. But Paul says, I want you to just be well. I want you to be well. As you're going about your daily routines, as you're going about what you need to be, I want you to be well. I, I, you may not remember everything that I'm going to say, but I want you to remember, you need to be well. Uh, be mindful uh, of what's around you. Be mindful of uh, and everybody that's, that, that's hugging on you don't love you. Amen. Everybody that's patting you on the back don't mean you good. 
They're trying to find that soft spot that they escape the night. Amen. We got to understand. So Paul is saying, beware. Beware uh, of the danger that's around us. But I do want to let you know there are some uh, uh, secrets to being saved. There are some secrets to being saved and, and how to walk after being born again. You see, we, we, we think that once we are saved, once we've given our life to Christ, that we got to walk around like little statues. You know, we got to do it, uh, uh, wear certain clothes a certain way and all this stuff. I, I, I'm saying this to be, you got to be presentable. I don't know, don't, don't get too far out there now. <laughs> be presentable in, in your clothing well. Uh, but we got to understand, we're not little robots. We're not little statues. Uh, but I do need to understand, I want you to understand that once we give our life to Christ, then we still can travel this Christian journey. We still can travel this Christian trail and, and understand that I'm going to be safe as I'm traveling. I'm going to be safe. I, I, I'm not going to let the devil try to entice me to go back to where I know what I used to do. I know what I came out of. I, I got tickled uh, 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 this past summer when we took our family our family vacation. Uh, all, I had all of them with me. And we went to an amusement park and we was walking. And, and they got the, I don't know why it was Pick On Me today, uh, Pick On Me Day. But they got the, one of the brands got to asking me, uh, oh, oh, uh, did, did, did you ever smoke? <laughs> did you ever drink? <laughs> why y'all want to know that stuff? Is very serious as well. Amen. 
Amen. And, and, and how sensible God's faith is that He puts in us. We have to put our faith in Him. We must remember our first love. We must remember our first love. Revelation chapter 2 verses 1 through 5 talks to us about uh, 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 not leaving our first love. We have to stay with our first love. That's when he talks to the church uh, in Ephesus. When he said these things say, he, he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the heaven of uh, those who left, I know your works. Your neighbor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say that they are apostles and are not, and have found them uh, and found them liars. And you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Don't become weary, my brothers and sisters. But remember therefore, from where you have fallen, repent to do the first works. Or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place. And it said in verse 4, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. My brothers and sisters, we have to stay with Jesus. We have to understand that this walk is real. And, and we have to walk like we belong to Jesus Christ. We have to walk like we belong to him. Uh, I read one writer said, I have never lost the wonder of it all. And we should not lose the wonder of the experience of, of having that relationship with Christ. I'm not saying that you have to walk around 24-7, just walk around uh, quoting scriptures and, and just nothing coming out of your mouth but hallelujahs and praise the Lord and that stuff. But what I am saying is you ought to walk like you know who Jesus is. Amen. You see, if you walk like you know who Jesus is, he'll direct what comes out of your mouth. Amen. 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 You, you see, because uh, sometimes when we start, uh, nothing that comes out of our mouth, nothing but scriptures and hallelujahs and thank you, Jesus, uh, a lot of times the devil will use that to turn people off. Amen. Amen. The devil will use that to turn people around. Because they say, oh, they think they all that and they ain't nothing. Because they ain't know your background. You may be hiding in here, but the people out there, they know what you're doing. Because they see you out there in the club just like, the, you know, you know, you ain't paying them no attention, they ain't paying you no attention. But you're there. But you got to understand, people know what you're doing. And you cannot hide from the world. And so uh, we, got to, we got to understand that the world will uh, try to entice us. But we got to walk like we belong to Jesus. We must walk by faith in the wonder of his love. So not only uh, are we to walk as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, secondly, you are to walk rooted in Christ Jesus the Lord. Uh, look at verse 7. Verse 7 starts out by saying, rooted and built up in him. Amen. We need to be rooted and built up in what we're talking about being rooted. We know when we plant trees and plant some things, those roots begin to grow deeper and deeper into the ground. And, 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 and the, the, most seeds, when you plant them, they grow down before they come up. Amen. Because the roots are getting uh, the nourishment from the earth. They're growing, they're, they're continuing to reach out, growing, doing. And, and, and so, what I'm saying is, if we're going to walk in Christ, we have to walk rooted in Him. In other words, don't wait the Sunday morning to hear the Bible read. Amen. Y'all hear me? Amen. Don't wait the Sunday morning to hear somebody pray. Amen. You ought to be praying every day. Amen. You ought to be reading your Bible every day. Amen. That's how you're going to get rooted Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. You got to be rooted in Jesus for yourself. You see, I, I, cannot, I cannot be saved for you. Amen. I can preach the word of God to you. The choir can sing the songs of Zion to you. The deacons can pray prayer, but we cannot be saved for you. You got to get rooted in the word for yourself. And that's what, that's what, that's what Paul is saying. If we were to walk safely on this danger trail, then first of all, we got to walk as we receive Christ, as we have received Christ Jesus the Lord. And then second, we got to walk rooted in uh, Jesus Christ Jesus the Lord. We should be like the roots of a tree 
reach out to take in water. The, and the, the water and the food that we take in is the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need to be reaching out to take in the Holy Spirit. Each and every day, we need to be calling upon the Holy Spirit. Come on and walk with me. Hey. We need to be calling on the When you get up in the morning, don't start your day without the Holy Spirit. You need to get, bow down and pray and read the Word of God. And then ask the Holy Spirit to come and dwell with you throughout that day. Yes. Say, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to face today. Yes. But you already know what's going on. I don't know what's going to come before these eyes. But, but Lord, I'm going to stay rooted in you. So when I get there, yes. you will show me how to deal with it. Yes. We have to be rooted, absorbing the nutrients uh, from the growth, from the Word of God. We found all we need. We found everything that we need in Christ. Amen. Amen. Everything that we need is in Christ. Amen. But when you look at that word, when you look at that word, Paul told them, Paul told them, don't, don't let anybody uh, uh, try to entice you in verses 89 that we read earlier. And say, don't try to entice you because of philosophy. But we need to stay in our faith. Yeah, uh, not, not in, don't, don't let the world pull you away, but stay in the word of God. Amen. That's what he's trying to make us understand. So we, if we're going to travel on this dangerous trail, we got to understand we got to walk as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord. We got to walk rooted in Christ Jesus the Lord. Third thing, we got to walk refreshed in Christ Jesus the Lord. Uh, again, in verse 7, he says, uh, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught. Amen. When you've been taught the word of God, then you are understand that the word will refresh you. Amen. Every now and then, as we're going about our daily occupation, uh, life will get us down. Amen. Sickness will come in our lives. Uh, bad situations happen. Uh, look, at, all of us are going through this pandemic now. Uh, and some of us have to deal with this pandemic with illness in our bodies. Uh, children going astray. Husbands and wives are and fighting with one another. But we all have different things that we have to deal with. But even in the midst of the dangerous things that we face on the trial, on this trail, we can be refreshed by the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God will refresh us. The Word of God will renew our spirit. Uh, our truths about Christ just keep refreshing us day by day. Yeah, uh, Colossians chapter, chapter 2 verse 10 says, And you are complete in Him who is the head of all principality and the power. We have to understand that God will complete us. We are complete in Him and He will cause us to be rejoicing day by day. He will refresh you. He will make everything all right. He is more powerful than our enemies. Yeah, we are made alive in Christ Jesus. Uh, we have been forgiven of our sin. So no matter what we have done, even if we did drink and curse and smoke and all that stuff, if we come to Christ and ask Him to forgive us, Amen. the Word tells us that God will forgive us. And so when we walk with Him, uh, he, he has forgiven us of our sin. Uh, the Word tells us that the debt of our transgression, uh, of the law has been paid. Uh, and it was paid uh, by Jesus Christ. Uh, Satan and his demons, uh, they have been uh, defeated. Uh, I know they're still running wild in the world, uh, but they don't know they've already been defeated. Uh, they can't conquer this person. Uh, and that's where we have to lead them. Uh, we have to lead them uh, to let the world know uh, that they cannot conquer us uh, because we belong to God. Uh, and God keep us uh, day by day. Uh, so I just come out and tell you what I'm saying. Uh, we have to walk safely uh, on the danger trail. Uh, walk uh, as you have received uh, Christ Jesus uh, the Lord. Uh, walk rooted uh, in Christ Jesus the Lord. Uh, yeah, uh, walk refreshed uh, in Christ Jesus uh, the Lord. Uh, and as I take my seat, uh, I 
Because I'm going to walk safely through this dangerous trail. The devil going to throw some darts at me, Nathan Harrison. The devil going to put some stumbling blocks in my pathway, Nathan Dunn. But you know what? God told me. One day when I was kneeling and praying, God said, Brandon, don't worry about it. He said, I'll make you enemies. You put I got up and said, thank you, Lord. That's why I don't fight with you, son. I just put you in God's hand. Let him take you up. Let me say this on closing. I want to just show y'all how magnificent God is. Last, yesterday, was a share. The event we had down in the summer with the youth. We started trying to play it up there and shut down so I could get out and down there too because I had been down there since about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock since yesterday morning. And I had my Lamb's Hill t shirt on. If I did not have a pocket to put my phone and put, uh, glasses in, I hung my glasses on, on my shirt, top, in the midst of cleaning up, straightening up, getting ready, getting out of there. Get all this stuff, lock the gate, because I was in the back, in the back went down, you know that back parking, they come out that back parking lot. Got out, got out the car, pull the gate, pull the gate closed and pull the chain across and put it. Jumped back in the truck and went on home. I had uh what's that? Bubbles newspaper. I had it and I, I at the house I said I'm gonna sit down and read the paper. I got the mail out of the mailbox because I've been going all day. Sit down and where are my glasses? Couldn't find my glasses. Went back outside with a flashlight around. Maybe I'll drop it in. When I got out of the truck looking around, looking around went up there in the mailbox, nowhere. I said, oh my God. I probably lost them at the cinema. And I had no idea where I had lost them at because I ran all the way behind them. I was running all over that building. Ran all up the back, that yard, the back end of head. It was total dark right there once it got dark. But I saw that friend, I said, oh God, you know. These are my drugstore glasses. These are the prescription glasses. You know they ain't got no money to be going back in the moment. I said, God, you're going to have to show me where I got no glasses. I got up this morning. I saw that. I got up there. I had a nature pair in the house, old pair of these, drugstore glasses. I, I got those to read this, the way on the stuff on the other side. And I got up this morning, got dressed, and I said, I'm leaving early. Because if I have to backtrack myself to that old building, everything that I did last night. I got there, went in that front gate. I stopped and sort of looked around the front gate. Didn't see them. I drove up to the back gate. When I drove up to the back gate, now y'all ain't gonna believe this. These glasses was hanging on the chain.
Praise the Father, our Lord, and our God. We are glad that you have commanded us to do it. We are still bold and glad your word. We pray, Lord, that these words will sink deep into all of our lives. And that we will walk safely through this dangerous trail. Trusting and depending upon you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your deliverance. Just keep us in your care. That we'll serve you from all. Continue to bless and strengthen those that are sick and shut in. Let it is your will that come up. But most of all, let your will be done. Bless this church as you have done in the past. And we'll be able to praise your right name. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. For his sake. Amen. Now when you give a thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often eat this bread and drink this cup, and proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy, unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we come now. Thank you for this uh, another day's journey. We thank you, Father, for blessing us with your word today to encourage us to stay focused on you and know that you have us in the palm of your hand. And even as we travel on this dangerous journey, you have everything it takes for us and we will be safe in you. So we thank you, we glorify. Bless now this bread that represents your broken body, uh, this fruit of the juice that represents your shed blood. And you, it gave you an all in all their own calorie for each and every one of us. So Father, as we partake of it, let it be done to your glory. And we'll praise you for everyone. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus the Christ, may he rest 